space on my kitchen and then used this wrapping paper that I got from Michaels which was two for three bucks as a runner. I then lined that runner so it didn't look so square with these two pieces of garland that I purchased from Home Goods about two years ago. A list of where I got everything in this video is in the description down below. I decided to go with the Keurig this year. I've had this for a very long time and then I wanted to host all the K-cups in this really pretty glass display case that I also got from Home Goods. To make this a little bit more rustic and host some of the sweets, I had some crates on hand and this signage that I also got from Home Goods. I'm not like the craziest coffee drinker. I got these K-Cups because they were green and red and then the hot cocoa was blue and I thought it was really cool to have a color scheme and then I just sorted them diagonally in a pattern because I'm crazy. To keep with the theme, I gathered some things I knew I could wrap easily in the wrapping paper that I used for the runner. So I grabbed scissors, tape, my sauces, and my whipped cream. I laid out my wrapping paper and put the little box bottle of caramel sauce up against it, then cut and taped it to secure it and raveled it up and then folded the end to just make a cleaner seam and taped it and it already looks better. I repeated that to the other bottles and then I printed out some of the sauce names and the whipped cream so everybody knew what they were and I just did that in Photoshop, it's super easy. I cut them out in circles and I didn't mind that they weren't perfect, I kind of liked that they were a little off. I put some glue on the back of those and glued them to a thicker red cardstock and they cut those out just a little bit wider than the black. I didn't want it to be too much red. I added a piece of tape directly to the bottle then placed the sign on top of it and I absolutely love these guys. I also love that you can change the wrapping paper out the color scheme and utilize this for any kind of themed coffee or hot chocolate bar. And for any of my sweets that needed to be crumbled, I just crumbled that in the packaging with a hammer and placed that into a smaller clear mason jar. And the clear is good because you don't got a label or anything because people can see what it is. As much as I love the idea to use a candy cane for my coffee or hot chocolate, I rarely do. So I only put a couple of candy canes out and then I just filled a jar with some spoons as another option. For the glass container, I decided to design a little sign that said dress your drink and I taped it directly to the back of the glass and then used a paint pen and just traced directly over it so it had a nice pretty sign to it. After I had all the big chunky pieces of the hot chocolate and coffee bar out, I just filled the negative space with my jars of all my sweets. And this is just something you have to step back with and look at it and reassess. It took me a couple of tries to really get it down. After everything was out that I needed for the hot chocolate and coffee bar, that's when I went back in to see if there was any more negative space left and I just filled that up with festive little decorations, which I stuck to just more neutrals, which was like pine cones and pine garland. It still didn't look full to me and that was because the garland was hiding behind everything and so I decided to just pin it up in the middle and drape it over, then add some lights and it was perfect. I hope that you guys enjoyed my take on a holiday hot chocolate and coffee bar. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. That is all for today, guys. I will see you on the next DIY. Happy holidays.